This is my training partner, Oliver, and... Hi, Oliver. Hi. <laughs> and Oliver has made a training shield based on an original shield, which is dated, I think, uh, 1300 or something like that? 1300, 1450. Okay, so uh, early 14th, uh, mid 14th uh, shield, the original of which is kept in Marburg University Museum, and um, it's... Uh, only very slightly curved and um, Cornelius, Ingo and I had the privilege to examine the original and um, Oliver has used our material to produce that particular training shield and what is really interesting for us now is the kind of strapping that you made so could you please show us the straps so these are the straps on the back side based on surviving rivets and remains of straps this was um, uh, this survived this uh, strap oh, the complete strap survived the complete strap survived and uh, this strap was uh, broken uh, at uh, oh yeah i remember mm -hmm. and uh, from this strap was just uh, a few centimeters oh, okay so, remained. yeah exactly so that's the main problem with the uh, medieval shields from marburg that uh, most of the straps uh, have been lost and um, now it's quite difficult to reconstruct uh, straps. Also note, I mean, uh, even though this of course is uh, just an improvisation, it's not uh, leather as you can see, but um, I find it's quite interesting to point out that just by the orientation of the cut straps, we cannot necessarily determine that something that uh, looks like it was extending in this direction actually did. As you can see here, um, at least on one shield that has survived uh, from the 14th century in Marburg, uh, a, a similar construction has survived where the ends of the straps are folded or turned uh, in such a fashion that the actual shield strap is lifted and naturally molds a hand grip. So this is one of the great uh, challenges when we are reconstructing the strappings of historical shields. Okay, can you uh, explain the various um, straps and their functions? In the end, um, uh, there are two um, main um, possibilities to grab the shield. Okay. The first one is uh, to get the hand on the lower strap and uh, to hold it this way, um, uh, as you can see. Okay, interesting. This is uh, relatively low. It's about the mid-height um, mm -hmm. of the shield, mid-level. Yeah. And the second one is uh, to get the arm uh, below this strap and grab it here. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the shield turns to a, um, a slight angle okay, forward if you um, yeah. hold it this way. Um, this would also, when you strike a blow, this would also um, protect your sword arm, so... Yeah. Okay, and then... Hit here, mm -hmm. the shield would protect And if you hand. go into a long point position, direct extension, same thing, the hand would be uh, covered. Yeah, okay, I can see. Very cool. And you have tried all these uh, at the Berlin Buckler Bouts uh, yes. in fencing. Yeah, okay, yes. I see. And uh, then uh, the uh, last one is the um, strap yeah, to, so -Guiche strap to the wear one. the shield. Uh -huh. it's, um, very, uh, you can just uh, get the shield on your back. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, um, so you can easily carry it like so? Yeah, it is easy to carry. And uh, you can then uh, also hold um, the shield uh, with, uh, uh, and carrying it with the strap mm -hmm. to get um, uh, support. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, think this might be a position which would be useful for horse riding? Uh, this, this could be. Um, you can uh, just, uh, uh, if you ride a horse, uh, you have the shield on the side mm -hmm. and you can uh, have it here, uh, okay. fix it with... Uh, but we're not uh, no experts in horse riding because... Uh, I actually do not own yeah, a horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, any recommendations or any ideas by actual uh, horsemen um, are most welcome. Okay, and then you have another uh, strap up there in the, in the corner. 
this one, yeah? Yeah, this is um, to wrap it. Oh, I see. Okay. So way. you don't use that uh, in conjunction with the uh, next strap with a geisha strap. No, not not really. Okay, because um, then you can, you can uh, do so, but um, um, I felt it, uh, the uh, shield is more secure. Yeah, there, uh, that makes the sense. Arm if uh, you also have it here mm, fixed. I uh, see. And the the length of the geese strap. Uh, so how far can you actually extend the shield forward? At uh, this uh, one, I can uh, extend it um, not to a maximum. I would uh, uh, have a buckler, okay. but um, in the end, uh, if I take it this way, it will get some far. Okay. Can you pick up a sword again so we get an idea? Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Well, that uh, certainly suffices. And um, but this extension, what it also does, completely covers the head. So any blow coming from the side here first has to pass uh, this edge out there. Okay. And the um, the rivets that we see on the front uh, that are pretty much the positions of the remaining ones. Yeah. And the shield was uh, the shield from the lords of uh, Nordeck Nord Rabenau. Uh, from Rabenau, yeah. Nordeck uh, of Rabenau, yeah, yeah. Uh, von Rabenau. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, I really like this. Um, I really like this uh, reconstruction. That's uh, why I videotaped it. Um, it's also interesting for those who are familiar with uh, Jan Kohlmorgen's reconstruction of this particular shield. Um, in his reconstruction, he has actually attached the strap to this um, little one, which he calls a leather bridge. So this geese strap is actually attached directly to the strap. Um, we did not see, we did not find any wear on the original strap that suggested that uh, the geese strap was mounted to it and was fixed to it because then this edge would have been fo uh, folded up and that was not the case. Um, statically and from an engineering point of view, this is more stable a construction anyway if the geese passes through this um, through this little loop shall we call it this or, or uh, mm -hmm. let us uh, bridge and then is fixed on an additional uh, point down here when you say so too that this is more stable than fixing it just to the bridge yes um, in the end uh, I would consider this uh, bridge holding uh, this strap down um, mm -hmm. if you just had um, this um, uh, with a nail here yeah. and it would uh, uh, then it would get all the tear uh, tear in this direction uh, yeah. 90 uh, um, degree from the shield mm -hmm. um, it would tear off yeah, more I easily see. I can see that yeah, yeah. than if you just yeah. have it this way so, yeah, yeah, yeah okay that makes sense mm -hmm. okay excellent and on the other hand here it has not this uh, uh, direct uh, tear uh, away, mm -hmm. it is more a tear to the in side. an angle to the side. Okay, that's why uh, it doesn't need yeah. uh, an additional loop to tie yeah. it to the shield board. It would. Yeah. And you said you, want to, uh, you would do a little um, um, modification in terms of weight distribution if you would do that shield once again? Um, yeah, I would um, uh, test um, if um, the um, point, uh, point of gravity would have an um, uh, impact on uh, this uh, strapping because the point of impact actually is here. The center of balance. The center of balance okay. and um, my arm is just uh, slightly below. Okay. Um, because um, the fixing points are just roughly taken from the shield, okay. it may be that um, so they were a little bit understand. higher or yeah. uh, lower and get my hand a little bit yeah, more yeah, to I this. I understand. So, uh, the, where's the center of gravity? Here's there. the center of gravity. Yeah. So, you, so maybe if these were just slightly moved inwards, then yeah. the grabbing hand would be closer to the center of gravity right. and that might um, because the first feeling uh, was uh, that um, if I grab it this way, mm -hmm. um, the shield tends to uh, tilt turn to the side, and tilt yeah. in this direction, mm -hmm. and this is because uh, I think the center of gravity is a little bit above the um, okay. arm, that makes and sense. I think it's uh, only slight modifications that could uh, mm -hmm. make this uh, get in balance. Mm -hmm. I see. 
Well, thank you very much. Very cool. I really like that. Oh, uh, one more question. Um, are you happy with the length of the neck strap? Uh, actually, not really. Um, I would like this have to be adjustable. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Uh, it depends on uh, uh, wearing a uh, helmet or a mask oh, sure. or yeah, yeah. Uh, wearing armor. A that would. At this yeah. point, it is a little bit too long for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, I would like it to have a little bit uh, shorter. Mm, okay. And also, if you could just hang it around your neck again. Yeah. Um, there is one depiction in Matthew Paris where it's hanging around the neck, like, only around the neck, and it yes, like so. And um, I think it's maybe like. I don't know, like this much higher in the illustration. I have to look up that illustration, something like this. So if you would be wearing a lot of armor and a gambeson and so around your neck there would be a lot of padding, um, then this uh, shield would sit somewhat higher. And we also often see shields that are uh, um, carried on the back and then the straps, uh, the straps run from here to here. So again, it looks mm -hmm. like it's not uh, um, the arms are not slipped through the strap, but instead it's hanging from the neck. Mm -hmm. So can you put it around, uh, yeah, like this? Exactly. Yeah. So it was sitting there just because he uh, was wearing um, a padded collar or something like that. Then um, the shield would sit pretty much in the same place where we see it in the miniatures, in the manuscripts. Thank you very much, Oliver. Very cool. <laughs> okay.